Hey guys, Robert here with Fiddleback Forge. It's that time again, it's Fiddleback Friday. So as you can see, we've got 12 amazing Fiddleback Forge knives to show you this week in the in hand coming up. Uh, some themes for this week are definitely gonna be uh, the colored pins in several of these models that you're seeing. Uh, we're gonna talk about that and go into a little bit more depth on those. We're also gonna go over first these three models right here. Why? Because we messed up the specs on the photo. Uh, so we wanna make sure we get the records set straight uh, right off the bat to show you those. We've also got an amazing knife from Amy with Warlander Enterprises. We're gonna show you that one without the sheath uh, towards the end of the video, as well as last but not least, we're gonna show you Joey's amazing Pamel Babinga this week as well. Man, that knife is fantastic along with these other fantastic knives. So you gotta stay tuned for the in hand. All right, so just a reminder for those of you that may be new around here, all the knives that you just saw that you're about to see in hand, uh, go up on the website, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, fiddlebackforge.com is the place. Look for Fiddleback Friday under the shop tab, or just scroll down the home screen until you see the Fiddleback Friday button. Click on that, and those knives will post at 9 p.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time, as they normally do. So make sure you get your translation right if you're not on the East Coast. Uh, to make sure you're not late because there's going to be several this week that evaporate. Uh, the 9 o'clock, we regularly see them. By 9.01, several are already gone. I can tell you last week, guys were a little slow on the draw. We saw, we saw a spike in traffic four or five minutes after they posted. Uh, those guys did not get the ones they were looking for. So make sure you're there a little bit early because the first one all the way through the checkout wins. So let's see what these knives look like in hand so you know what's going to show up in your mailbox next week. This bad boy right here is a Bush Finger, as you can tell. OD Green, Canvas Micarta, Natural Pins. Got the Trinity pinout going on there. Thick, natural liners on that bad boy. 80 CRV2 for the steel. Eighth inch, slightly tapered tang to give you that super nice balance point right there between those two pins. Gorgeous knife, as you know, the Bush Finger is one of the original designs that Andy came up with. Uh, it's Fiddleback Forge Classic and for great reason. It's a fantastic all-around knife. One of my favorite in the 4-inch range personally. But let's get on to the mirror image as far as the handle material goes. Uh, now this isn't natural micarta, so to speak. This is what's called a goldenrod micarta. Uh, and there's something else different about this knife. I'll get to that last. Uh, taper tang on this, 8th inch, 80 CRV2 as well. Beautiful grind on that, finished out super fantastic. Thick green, OD green liners on that. Now the thing that's different about this is most of the time, as you guys know, Andy has always used micarta pins. Well on this one, to match that OD green, uh, you'll notice that he's been using a lot of colored pins lately uh, that are not the normal natural and black canvas micarta. So these are OD green G10 pins on that bad boy. Got the Trinity pin out there as well to match that. Super beautiful knife. Very different from most Fiddleback Forge handle layouts uh, as far as materials go. Uh, the Bush Hermit is definitely the culmination of everything that Andy has learned over the last 10 years or so about making a bushcraft knife. Uh, another four inch bladed model that I really like. Uh, much more of an open handle design than the Bush Finger uh, and a thicker handle as well. So if I can try to hold both of these up together, uh, you can get an idea what the differences are. Bush finger on the bottom there, uh, having no finger guard uh, and a wider, slightly wider blade. Bush Hermit having uh, the finger guard here that you can see there. And you can see that the Bush finger on the bottom there has much more of a closed handle design, uh, whereas the Bush Hermit is a little more open and thicker. So if you like them to feel locked in, the Bush Finger is probably going to be your choice if you like a little bit thinner of a handle. Uh, if you like a thick handle and you like it to be more open, uh, and that does fit a lot of more uh, hand sizes a little bit better as well, the Bush Hermit might be for you in that case. And then moving on to another great knife in the 4-inch blade range, uh, one designed by Mr. Kevin Estella. Uh, you can find him over on Estella Wild Ed. It's not Estella Wilded, by the way. It's Wilderness Education for short. But uh, Mr. Kevin designed this knife a while back with Andy. This is the K.E. Bushy. 
Now I said that one of the specs on this was incorrect on uh, our photo preview earlier, and it was the steel. So we had this listed as A2. Uh, Andy and I both agree after looking at it, it is most definitely O1. Uh, so if you've been waiting on a KE Bushy in O1, uh, this is about as good as it gets, man. That crosscut micarta we love so much. Uh, natural liners, natural pins, blue pinstripe really setting it off, skeletonized full tang. Just a fantastic bushcraft knife designed by our favorite wilderness instructor, Mr. Kevin Estella. And let's go ahead and move on to some more knives. Okay, so back to our regularly scheduled program with the knife I was going to start with originally uh, until we had the mishaps, this bad boy right here. Uh, the pairing knife is one of Andy's newer designs, uh, definitely designed with more of a kitchen slant for things. Uh, that's why it's just called the paring knife. That's what it's meant for, for some kitchen duty, getting those fruits and vegetables all sliced up and skinned. And this thing is amazing. Just let you look at that for a moment. That handle combo is awesome. It's got the double mint JG10 on there. Uh, it's got that lime green liner that's also separating the bolster. And the bolster on this is also pretty awesome. It's green denim micarta. Got black liners, got those lime pinstripes, lining all that jade, G10. 330 seconds, A2, skeletonized full tang. It's gonna get a nice patina on it, but not too much. Uh, from all that kitchen use, it's gonna look fantastic and look even better over time. And that handle combo is very unique. I haven't seen that one before, uh, but I guarantee the way this turned out, Andy's probably gonna do some more of those. That is a fantastic handle combo right there. So that's the pairing knife. And let's move on to a knife you hadn't seen in quite a while. And also in a color that you haven't seen in quite a while. So this is the pink and black G10. This is the Stubby Muck. So this is the, not quite the smallest of the Nest Muck inspired uh, knives from Andy. This is the second smallest. So the smallest being the Neck Muck. So this is the Stubby Muck. And this was also, if you caught the preview super early last night, this was actually another one we messed up. We had the name wrong on that as well. So this week was just awesome with a bunch of last minute fixes on everything. So uh, black liners, white pinstripes on this, 330 seconds, A2, really cool little knife, skeletonized full tang. If you're wanting something to do, uh, it'll be really good for skinning with that, with that good belly size right there. Uh, and it's very confidence inspiring, really locks in. Good three finger design on that, but very comfortable for such a little knife. Very cool little guy there in that pink and black G10. And one more little one before we move on to some more of the larger sizes. All right, guys, so this one has become quite the favorite in the smaller EDC sizes and for really good reason. It's a great utility design. This is the Pygmy. Um, it's also designed to be kind of a starter entry level slash hardworking utilitarian kind of knife. So uh, the Pygmy is the smaller brother to the Shaman and the Chief. As you know, no liners, no pinstripes. So they're designed to be, again, price sensitive. So uh, we kept all these commando to keep the price down uh, for you to pass that on to you. Trinity pin out on the natural pins. 80 CRV2 for the blade, and that's an eighth inch. Just a great little utility knife right there. You can pull that thing out at work, and nobody's going to freak out because you had a knife. Because it is a very non-intimidating size and shape for a knife. All right, so I'm going to show you guys what may be the bells of the ball for this week, as far as the ones that are going to get the most attention, and they are both the Kephart model. So this particular Kephart has a beautiful blood wood on the pommel scales that you see there, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, black canvas micarta on the bolster and that sweet white pinstripe lining the entire thing. So it's got a pretty nice little taper on there. Uh, starts out as eighth inch and 80 CRV2. Really just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Really super well done. Black liners on that, black pins. Uh, these black pins up here pretty much disappear. You you got to really be looking for them to actually pick them out. Uh, so I'm not even going to point them out. I'm going to let you try to find them. But Bloodwood's definitely one of my favorite woods. It's a favorite of many of you. 
Uh, that knife is going to get a lot of tension and I expect that one to go super duper fast. So the other one of the Kephart model that's going to get a lot of attention as well is this one. Bam. The other cat part is also amazing, but for completely different reasons. It's got that kind of that A and W root beer kind of kind of color swag combination to it. Uh, very old school and classic, while also being kind of popping. Pretty cool. It's got the goldenrod micarta on the bolster. It's got catalogs on the pommel end. Trinity pin out. We're going to talk about those pins also. Um, these pins up here, natural canvas micarta to match the liners. Uh, but these pins right here, let me get in a little closer, are orange G10 to match those orange G10 pinstripes, which are wrapping the entire pommel area as well. So this one's skeletonized full tang, eighth inch, 80 CRV2. And just a little bit more about the Kephart model in general. Uh, you know that this is the Kephart, but not a traditional Kephart. So this is Andy's take on the traditional design, but not keeping really with the design elements as much as the spirit of the intended use of the original knife, uh, which Andy didn't really care for. Uh, wanted to do something that was a little more functional and useful uh, with a better tip on there. So that's what he designed with the Kephart. And I tell you, there's a ton of you guys that totally agree with him, including me, uh, because Kephart is very much a classic, not only in name, but it's, this design is very much classic and the Fiddleback Forge lineup. Uh, there's been quite a few of them, including uh, the Midtech line, which we've done, uh, that you're familiar with as well. All right, so next up is one of the handyman, or one of the handyman models. That way I don't pluralize the name and make it incorrect. Uh, but last week we had a handyman and that burnt orange canvas micarta, which you guys know that I loved. And thank you to the person who bought it yesterday and kept me from having to take it home. But guys, I'm in trouble again. Look at this thing. Look at it. Look at the chatoyants in the handle. Oh, the high grind, eighth inch, A2. Definitely, definitely in trouble again. Natural liners, blue pinstripes. And last but not least, bronzed orange curly maple. Mm, 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 mm. Handyman is named that way because obviously it's super handy, but uh, mainly to do with the blade size, handle shape, handle size. It's just about perfect for everything from EDC uh, to doing all your camp chores. Three and three eighths inch on the blade, uh, seven and five eighths inch overall. Super comfortable. Uh, please, somebody help me out. Take that beautiful thing home so I don't have to. Again, please. Uh, Dang, Andy's making it hard on the brother. I'm trying to leave all these for you guys and he's making it hard. But maybe orange isn't your color. Maybe raspberry micarta is really the one that talks to you. And I can't blame you. The way that it lays, layers out and uh, starts to shape out when the handle gets shaped is fantastic. And Andy did a really nice job. Those black liners, white pinstripes really setting it off. And maybe, maybe the A2 from the other one isn't your flavor either, because maybe you live in a temperate rainforest environment and you need CPM 154, or maybe you're just not a fan of patina. Either way, got you covered with that bad boy right there. Again, handyman model. Oh man, fantastic. I'm running out of places to put them already. You gotta move that stuff in the background out of the way. All right, got one you haven't seen in a while. Here's the Reaper, obviously inspired name-wise uh, by the shape of the Grim Reaper's sickle, uh, as you can tell there from the blade. But don't be too scared of that blade. We put in plenty of finger guard there to keep you plenty safe. Nice open handle design there, so no matter what size hand you have, uh, it's going to feel like it was made just for you. And it was. Got blue-green Burlatex on there, which is awesome. I love that color layout. Uh, got natural liners, white pinstripes to really set it off. Got the Trinity pin out right there. Of course, the uh, classic bullseye lanyard tube that's on everything. We never point that out because you guys are so used to seeing it, but uh, I forget sometimes. Some of you don't know that, and we get the question all the time, is that a ball bearing? No, it's not a ball bearing. It is a custom-made lanyard tube uh, that is trademarked Fiddleback Forge. So you see that, you know it's a Fiddleback Forge knife. 
and amazing. So really cool knife. Hope you guys dig that one. Haven't done it in a while. All right, next up is one that you have seen pattern-wise uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, this is the Leuku, Luku, Lake View. Luku. Okay, this is the Luke. Yeah, it's just really pretty. It's awesome. Uh, 80 CRV2 on the blade there, no matter how you want to say it. Got that nice ghost timon going on. Check out that JG10. Again, you see the colored pins that Andy is using to match the liners. So on this, it's got the orange liners, the orange pins to match, which give this kind of a different dimension than you're used to, even with that jade. Black liners, tapered tang, and if you're wondering, the jade color is sunburst jade. When it has the orange liners on there, it gives it kind of an orange hue. Uh, really cool. You can tell when I turn it sideways actually how translucent the material normally is until you see it against that liner. Uh, so it almost seems to change color a little bit as you move it around. Really awesome. Uh, the Leoku has got, uh, as far as the size for the specs go, five inch blade, nine and a half inch overall. So if you like your bushcraft knives a little bit larger, uh, that is gonna be the one for you. Got that nice straight spine design. Really awesome model there. I'm trying to sneak her in there without beating up everything. Ooh, that was close. All right, let's move on to the apprentice models, starting with Amy. Miss Amy going with uh, Warlander Enterprises. Let me turn where you can actually read it there. This beautiful knife is the Mesquite model. And it's got the blue curly maple on the bolsters, black linen micarta on the pommel scales, black liners, white pinstripes. And this thing is super thick. It, it just, it looks even thicker in person than what it actually is. And even on the video here, this is actually 530 seconds. Uh, but it looks thicker than that. It almost looks like a 3 16 but I even measured it. It's actually 530 seconds. So 80 CRV2, uh, satin hammer finish on there. Man, Amy continues to knock it out of the park. And the great thing about Amy's knives uh, that a lot of you guys like is the fact, sorry to get off camera, is the fact that it comes with a handmade sheath. She's fantastic at sheath making as well. I'm not going to snap that one because I'm trying to keep everything moving. Uh, but a fantastic looking belt sheath there. And I really like the way she designs the sheaths out where whatever uh, kind of the standout feature of the knife handle is, she never covers that, which is a really cool, nice touch. If you haven't noticed that about her knives before, uh, now you will. Now you'll notice it. All right, last but definitely not least, Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works, killing it, killing it again. So this is his Perfector model. Listen, I can't argue with the name. This thing feels great. I've got a large to extra large size hand, uh, depending on what glove or whose hand I'm shaking at the time, I guess. Uh, but this one feels, well, like it fits like a glove, like a good handshake. Uh, it's got a real great shape, but this is a handle design that kind of locks you in. Uh, so if you've got the right size hand, this is going to be absolutely perfect. It's going to lock you in back here at the pommel. That finger, finger guard right there is very ample. Uh, gives you a lot of confidence when holding this thing. So if you're putting in the work, uh, this thing's not going anywhere on you. So 80 CRV2 for a hardworking, durable blade. Eighth inch, sweet little taper tang he's got there. Black liners, red pinstripes, and the party, the party on this one, the, st the showstopper, this Pamelba Binga. Not only is it one of my favorite handle materials because it's gorgeous, uh, but it's also very, very durable, and it's also super lightweight. So think of it kind of like... Uh, Bamboo, but actually good looking. So can't, can't argue with that. The name fits this model and this particular knife perfectly. The Perfector by Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works. Set her right there. So these are the knives for Fiddleback Friday this week. As you know, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Get a Fiddleback.